Good evening, everyone. My name is Maya Tate, and I am the. And this is Ewan, and I am the mayor of the district of Souk, and I'm very pleased, and we are very pleased to be tonight's storytellers. And tonight we're going to share a favorite of ours, which is Thomas the Original Number One Engine. We're reading a story, honey. I'm, I'm the boss. Apparently, he is the boss. So. <laughs> This is one of the, this is the original Thomas the Tank Engine story. No. And it was written by the Reverend Audrey. No, they didn't. Original in, in illustrations no. were by C. Mommy, Reginald Mommy, Dalby. Mommy. And it was published by Random House New York in 1946. Mommy. So let us begin. Here's the first page with all the information. And the dedication is Dear Christopher, here is your friend Thomas the Tank Engine. He wanted to come out of the station yard and see the world. These stories tell you how he did it. I hope you will like them because you helped me make them. Your loving daddy. And here is this page. So I'm going to read the very first story which is called Thomas and Gordon. Thomas was a tank engine who lived at a big station. He had six small wheels, a short stumpy funnel, a short stumpy boiler, and a short stumpy dome. He was a fussy little engine, always pulling coaches about. He pulled them to the station ready for the big engines to take out on long journeys. And when trains came in and the people came out, he would pull the empty coaches away so that the big engines could go and rest. He was a cheeky little engine too. There's little Thomas. He thought no engine worked as hard as he did, so he used to play tricks on them. He liked best of all to come quietly beside a big engine dozing on a siding and make him jump. Peep, 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 peep. Shh, wake up, lazy bones, he would whistle. Why don't you work hard like me? Then he would laugh rudely and run away to find more coaches. There's Thomas sneaking up. One day, Gordon was resting on a siding. He was very tired. The big engine's express he always pulled had been late, and he had to run as fast as he could to make up for lost time. He was just going to sleep when Thomas came up in his cheeky way. Wake up, lazy bones, he whistled. Do some hard work for a change. You can't catch me. And he ran off laughing. Well, instead of going to sleep, Gordon thought how he could get Thomas back. One morning, Thomas wouldn't wake up. His driver and fireman couldn't make him start, and there wasn't enough steam. It was nearly time for the express. The people were waiting, but the coaches weren't ready. Oh, poor sleepy Thomas. At last, Thomas started. Oh, dear, oh, dear, he yawned. Come on, said the coaches. Hurry up. Thomas gave them a rude bump and started for the station. Don't dwaddle, don't dwaddle, he grumbled. Where have you been? Where have you been? Asked the coaches crossly. Thomas fussed into the station where Gordon was waiting. Poop, 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 hurry you up, said Gordon crossly. Look at Gordon. Peep, 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 hurry yourself, said Cheeky Thomas. Yes, said Gordon, I will. And before the, almost before the coaches had stopped moving, Gordon came out of his siding and was coupled to the train. Poop, poop, he whistled, get in quickly, please. So the people got in quickly, and the signal went down, and the clock struck the hour. The guard waved his green flag, and Gordon was ready to start. Thomas usually pushed behind the big trains to help them start, but he was always uncoupled first, so that when the trains were running nicely, he could stop and go back. This time, he was late, and Gordon started so quickly that they forgot to uncouple Thomas. Poop, poop, said Gordon. Peep, 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 whistled Thomas. Come on, come on, puffed Gordon to the coaches. Pull harder, pull harder, puffed Thomas to Gordon. The heavy train slowly began to move out of the station. The train went faster and faster, too fast for Thomas. He wanted to stop, but he couldn't. Peep, peep, stop, stop, he whistled. Hurry, 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 laughed Gordon in front. Oh, there they go. You can't get away, you can't get away, laughed the coaches. Poor Thomas was going faster than he had ever gone before. 
He was out of breath, and his wheels hurt, but he had to go on. I shall never be the same again, he thought sadly. My wheels will be quite worn out. At last they stopped at a station. Everyone laughed to see Thomas puffing and panting behind. They uncoupled him, put him on a turntable, and then he ran on a siding out of the way. Well, little Thomas, chuckled Gordon as he passed. Now you know what hard work means, don't you? There's this page. Poor Thomas couldn't answer. He had no breath. He just puffed slowly away to rest and had a long, long drink. He went home very slowly and was careful afterwards never to be cheeky to Gordon again. So that's it for the very first story. There's, a, there's four of them in this book, so I shared the first one with you. A little bit of interruption here. I'm sure parents will relate to that. So on that note, I really wish to thank Charlene, Counselor Charlene thornton Joe from Victoria for starting the storytelling initiative and for inviting me to participate. It's been a lot of fun to see all the different readers from across the region, and I'm just delighted to be a part of this. So thank you, Counselor thornton Joe, and to all the little ones and parents, rest well, sleep well, and take good care. Thank you.